The Return of Saint Anne After the departure of the kings, the Holy Family went over into the other cave, and I saw the crib cave quite empty, the ass alone still standing there. Everything, even the earth, had been cleared away. I saw Mary peaceful and happy in her new abode, which had been arranged somewhat comfortably. Her couch was near the wall, and by her rested the child Jesus, in an oval basket made of broad strips of bark. I saw Joseph bringing in a pitcher of water and something in a dish, but he did not go any more to Bethlehem for necessities. The shepherds brought him all that he needed. Many persons going up to Bethlehem for the Sabbath called also at the crypt cave. But when they no longer found Mary there, they went on to the city. Anne now came back to the mother of God. She had been eight days with her youngest sister, who had married into the tribe of Benjamin. She lived about three hours' distance from Bethlehem and had several sons who later became disciples of Jesus. Among them was the bridegroom at Cana. Anne's eldest daughter was with her. She was taller than Anne and looked almost as old. Anne's second husband also was with her. He was older and taller than Joachim. His name was Iliad and was engaged at the temple where he had something to do with the cattle intended for sacrifice. Anne had a daughter by this marriage, and she too was called Mary. At the time of Christ's birth, the child may have been from six to eight years old. By her third husband, Anne had a son, who was known as the brother of Christ. There is a mystery connected with Anne's repeated marriages. She entered into them in obedience to the divine command. The grace by which she had become fruitful with Mary had yet not been exhausted. It was as if a blessing had to be consumed. There were again in Bethlehem soldiers seeking in many houses after the king's son newly born. They especially importuned with their questions a noble Jewish lady who was in childbed. But they went no more to the crib cave. It was now reported that only a poor Jewish family had been there, but of them nothing more could be learned. Two of the old shepherds went to Joseph and warned him of what was going on in Bethlehem. Then I saw Joseph, Mary, and Anne with the child Jesus making their way from the cave to the tomb under that large cedar tree beneath which I had heard the king singing one evening. It was distant from the cave, about seven and a half minutes. The tree stood upon a hill at the foot of which was an obliquely lying door opening into a passage that led to a perpendicular door which closed to the entrance of the tomb. The shepherds often stayed in the forepart of it. In front of the tomb was a spring. The tomb cave itself was not square, but rather rounded in form. At the upper end, which was somewhat broader, something like a scalloped stone coffin stood on heavy supports. Upon a foundation of stone, one could see between it and the coffin. The interior of the cave was of soft white stone. I saw the Holy Family entering it by night with a covered light. In the cave that they had vacated, nothing now was to be seen which could attract notice. The beds had been rolled up and taken away, as well as all their household effects. It looked like an abandoned dwelling place. I saw Mary and Joseph taking formal leave of the crib cave. They spread the deep red cover of the kings over that spot upon which the child Jesus was born, laid the child on it, kneeling beside it, 
prayed. Then they laid the child in the crib and again prayed beside it. And lastly, on the place where it had been circumcised, they too knelt in prayer. Joseph had caused the young she ass to be pawned among his relatives, where he was still resolved to return to Bethlehem and build himself a house in the valley of the shepherds. He had mentioned his intention to the shepherds, saying that they saying that he would take care, he would take Mary for a while to her mother, that she might recover from the hardships undergone in her late abode. He left all kinds of things with them 